Um, you just have to understand the house I live in and the, 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 the way we live. Devin walking in the grace that she walks in. When God gives her a word, I think it's not just for a podcast. I believe it to be for all of us in the kingdom of God. And so um, I have a prophetic word that I'm going to release next week. Hello. I can tell you this for sure. I, I didn't know what God had given her. She was up last night typing it. I was up last night receiving what God was giving me. I, this is so hot. I don't even know what she's going to say. But I'm going to tell you that we're in unique times. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Singing, dancing, running, and flag-waving, it's all intercession, according to Michaela Rasnick at Redemption to the Nations Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where lead pastors Kevin and Devin Wallace hear fresh, prophetic words from God in their grace-filled home on the regular. This Sunday, Kevin Wallace will allow his wife and lead pastrix to take the reins and not preach, but rather to declare what he calls the now word. And I do believe that in the day we're living, we have to have more than a sermon. Nothing wrong with preaching sermons. I preach sermons all the time, but I'm also thankful God is speaking the now word. The now word. The now word. In other words, divine new revelation. So let's see what God wants to say through Pastrix Devin Wallace on Sunday, April 7th, 2024. And Kev may get to preach um, before it's over with. I don't have a sermon. I do have a word. Um, I am going to tell a story and, and tell the word through this story. And She doesn't have a sermon. She has a word, a word straight down a prophetic pipeline from the Lord to the house of Wallace. Now, she's going to tell it through a story. Now, if you're at all concerned about a woman preaching, well, don't be. Because for one, she's not preaching. She's revealing new revelation. And there's some people here who don't even believe in women preachers, and you'll leave before the sermon's over, and we want to invite you to leave now. It doesn't matter to us if you... Okay, what real pastor who has a passion for the gospel and for people hearing the gospel would tell people to leave a worship service? Well, I want to say to you all who are watching, don't leave. Don't tune this out, because within this video, you will hear real truth from God's word, I assure you. The second reason Pastor Kevin gives for women preaching is because he found a verse that makes it okay. Believe in female preachers. If God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through anybody he wants to speak through. So get over it. That's right. God did speak through a donkey. In Numbers 22, we have Balaam's donkey, who was able to see the angel of the Lord. And this donkey spoke to Balaam and asked why he beat him the three times that he saw the Lord. Now, this, of course, is an exception to the rule. We don't have any other example of donkeys speaking in all of Scripture. But we do have clear passages that would prohibit a woman from holding the office of pastor, elder, and overseer, which are all the same office. You know, 1 Peter 5, 1 and 2. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd, which means pastor, the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight as an overseer, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. Remember that in, in Ephesians chapter 4, God gave individual offices to the church, not giftings or abilities to individuals who may be either male or female. I say that because one of the first qualifications of an elder, pastor, overseer is found in both 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. And it's the fact that they should be the husband of one wife. And that's pretty clear. But let's pretend just for this video that if a donkey can speak, then so can Kevin's wife. Devin heard three words from the Lord while she was doing a morning jog. So here we go. 
The Lord spoke three words of emotion to me while I was running. Everybody, I want you to say these words with me. Say shaking. A great shaking. Shifting. But it's going to shift me. And settling. Don't settle for less. Now, how Devin knows that these three words came from God instead of old Joel, Joel Osteen's sermons that she's heard before remains unclear. Devin will refer to a few scripture passages to spice up her three words from the Lord. I'm going to read a verse. I'm going to try to, to put a text to it so it sounds a little more sermonic. And I'm going to take you to John chapter 6, to the very familiar story of Jesus a walking on the water. Okay, so the question is, how will Devin integrate shaking, shifting, and settling into this well-known passage of Jesus walking on the water. Well, let's find out. What, what is shaking their boat? What is shaking their faith? What is causing terror in the core of their being? Jesus is calmly defying nature and gravity and stepping on top of. And if you don't remember anything I say in this download today... I want you to walk away with those words in your spirit. Don't be afraid. Jesus said, it's me or it is I. Okay, uh, let's get this download of Devin's straight. Don't be afraid. It's me. Are they sufficiently secure in your small s spirit? So as it turns out, that was the extent of what we will get out of John chapter 6 regarding this now word. Because there's only so much shaking to be had in John chapter 6 in the passage that concerns Jesus walking on the water. There was some definite uh, settling in the parallel passage found in Matthew 14 where Peter stepped onto the water and then took his eyes off of Jesus. But let's stay on point because Devin's now word is all about shaking right now. We continue. So what does that word shaking mean? It means to tremble or to vibrate, and unfortunately, it means to agitate. Now remember, this is all part of Devin's download from God, so it's really important that we understand all the now words that describe shaking. In fact, I sense tremors coming on. When I began to run and I was praying about this word shaking, the Lord said to me, Devin, it will be a seismic shaking. Seismic, right? Or seismic? A seismic shaking. Now, unfortunately, I am not as smart as the Holy Spirit sometimes allows me to look. I had to actually look up what seismic meant to even know what he was saying. And that means a shaking of the ground. Tremors. Oh, that's old school. I love I loved that movie. It was hilarious. And I'm extremely fortunate because I have grown up in Los Angeles and I came to know what the word seismic and tremors meant at a very young age. Devin is now going to say, conveniently, that at the exact time she was having this divine download, there was an earthquake in New York City. And I had no idea when I was done with my run, I would receive messages from my dear friends in New York that while the Lord was speaking this word, their ground was shaking with a 4.8 earthquake. You know, what, what more confirmation would one need as evidence that the Lord was giving this download about shaking? Now, this is a very, very long now word that Devin has for the people of her church. So let's get a broader feel for how she ramps up the intensity as she goes. But we will stop to consider the biblical text that she includes to make it a little more tremoric or seismic or (laughs) sermonic, whatever. Shaking can be, and you just got to track with me because this is a Devin Wallace, God talking to me word. So there's going to be a lot of things you're just going to have to absorb today. Absorbent means the ability to soak up liquid easily. Shaking can be an initiator of shifting or shaking can be a byproduct of shifting. But shaking is not the shifting. The shaking is not there to stop you. The shaking is there to shift you. We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Uh, Shake the sillies out indeed. Now, here comes the next scripture reference. Because in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, Jesus says, or the, the writer, Paul says. Now, hold on there, oh supposed prophetess that is sometimes not as smart as the Holy Spirit allows you to look. There's a sense in which Jesus did write the book of Hebrews. 
The eternal Son of God who took on flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary in the fullness of time is true God, right? And 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that Scripture, well, all of Scripture, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for, for correction, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, meaning needing no new revelation, equipped for every good work. And actually, there's an ongoing debate among biblical scholars as to who actually wrote the letter of Hebrews. You know, it's anonymous, so we can't be sure which human author wrote it in conjunction with the superintendents of the Holy Spirit. Some say Paul, but others say Barnabas or Silas or Apollos. But we can be sure that the early church recognized it as God breathed. That the word of the Lord, the voice of God, shook the heavens and the earth, and that he has said once again, I will shake everything that can be shaken. What is the purpose of the shaking? Destruction of what is unnecessary or in the way. Well, I'd rather say making it obsolete. Um, see, let, let's dig a little deeper on that thought. Verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 12 draws our attention to Exodus 19 when the glory of God came down on Mount Sinai. Beginning at verse 16, we read, On the third day, and this is verse 16 of Exodus, on the third day when morning came, there was thunder and lightning. A thick cloud was upon the mountain, and a very loud blast of the ram's horn went out, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. And the smoke rose uh, like, like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. So here we have fire, smoke, great racket, and shaking. The writer to the Hebrews says that the people stayed back. So awesome and frightening was that event. God even warned, if even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Because at that time, there was a necessary separation between God and his people. But then the writer of Hebrews reminds his hearers of this new covenant reality. The wall of separation has been torn down. Remember, Ephesians 2, 13 through 15. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments that might create in himself, that he might create in himself one new man, both Jew and Gentile. And just look who Christians gather together with as they come and worship. The writer of Hebrews says, But you have come to Mount Zion above, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. And I believe that's the church on earth right now. We are not there yet, but we are enrolled. And to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, which are all those who have died in faith before us. And how is this all possible? Because of Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word, meaning grace and mercy, than the blood of Abel, which only spoke vengeance and justice. Okay, Devin will now then begin to play Old Testament prophetess once again. And God said, I'm about to shake. What did you just say? But I'm not shaking for the sake of shaking. I'm not shaking things to get attention or to cause fear. I'm not shaking things to cause destruction. I am about to shake things because there's a shift that needs to take place. And I'm going to instigate a shift by shaking what can be shaken so that something shifts into place. Uh, now, did God really give this new revelation to Devon? I don't think so. But what I do think is that both Devon and her husband, Kevin, went to the same preaching school of BS. But it will destroy everything the enemy has constructed around you to hinder you, lock you in, or keep you from the fullness of his kingdom. I still believe God! Noah believed God, and he built a boat for the saving of his house. Abraham believed God, and become the 
father of many nations. Now, the BS stands for breathing and shouting. <laughs> it's a bona fide preaching technique that's been around for a long time now. T.D. Jakes, Ken Copeland, Steve Furtick, Jesse Duplantis, and a host of others. They all do the same thing. They get loud and they breathe deep in between lines, like, well, well like they have COPD. Super annoying, if you ask me. Devin will now add just a little more Bible to her new revelation of shaking and shifting in an attempt to give it more street cred. Let's take a look at scripture. The children of Israel instigated an earthquake when they marched around Jericho. It's crazy. If you look at tectonic plates today, I'm going to get into that in a moment. Now, this is just Devin giving a science lesson, a what if. We won't know till we get to heaven, but let's just interact with scripture and say, what if? What if Yahweh knew they could only do one lap a day or the earthquake would happen too soon? All right. I read the passage just recently, and I don't recall an earthquake being mentioned at all in Joshua chapter 6. In fact, how the wall came down is not the point of the story at all. The point of the story is that God is the one who will deliver his people. Israel simply needs to trust and wait. Just a what if, but I'm here to let you know there's a shaking that can initiate a purposeful destruction that will I don't know. <laughs> it was something about a shaking and a purpose, uh, purposeful destruction resulting in a shifting. So now that we've jet skied with full gas, uh, that was a favorite phrase of my wife, Laura, uh, when, when somebody was running really hard, <laughs> they were going full gas. Okay, now that we've uh, jet skied full gas over Hebrews chapter 12 and John 6 and now Joshua 6, Let's take a look at a few more nuggets of supposed new revelation, you know, the now word, and then some final thoughts. So don't confuse the shaking with the actual shifting. And wherever you see shaking, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the shift that is actually taking place. Shaking is a movement, but shifting is repositioning. And when something shakes, it can remain intact. But when something shifts, pressure is released. You feel a pressure inside of you. You know things aren't like it used to be. Something's shifting, and you feel that pressure. Oh, man. I really have to go to the bathroom. I have had it with the pressure at your core. I'm going to shake you until that shift happens. I will shake you until your core moves. Some of us get stuck in cycles of shaking because we won't surrender to the shifting. Oh, man. <laughs> well, have you had enough? <laughs> Well, as you know, I'm a glutton for punishment for watching this crazy stuff and then presenting it to you in a Cliff Notes uh, format. So maybe one more little nugget just for uh, good measure. <clears throat> Father, we need a terrain change. I am ready for a terrain change! Tremors. I know, I know. <laughs> Tremors was not one of her words, but it might have well as been added to the list of three and made four. I don't know. Let's do this. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, okay? And that passage that she was talking about, which is sort of the end of chapter 12, as we close. Unlike the shaking and loud racket of Mount Sinai, where God came in proximity to his people, but because of the blindingly white-hot holiness of God, the people could not and did not want to come too close, lest they be consumed. But the heavenly Mount Zion is vastly different because of the person and work of the God-man, Jesus the Christ. Christians can now, as Paul says in Ephesians 3, verse 12, come into the presence of God with boldness and confidence, having access to God's throne by faith in Jesus. The last verse in, uh, in Hebrews 28, verse, uh, verse 28, as I just said, sorry, it reads this way, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, where the rights of its citizens will never be at risk. This kingdom will never be wrongly governed. It will never be overthrown, and it will never be invaded by rival kingdoms. Therefore, 
He writes, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is, apart from Christ, a consuming fire. You see, it's only to the extent that a preacher stays within the the boundaries or the guardrails of God's revealed word that you can be sure that it is God speaking to you through the feeble attempts of the pastor, elder, overseer, words that bring the terror of the law, the sweetness of the gospel, true Christian comfort, and the sure and reliable promise of eternal life.